Just one choice away from everything that we want in this life. We are never guaranteed today, so I make every breath my right. We are living on the edge of greatness. How about it? This game the matrix. Can you taste it? You could be weightless without a spaceship. One chance, one shot, any given time, what you got? I got one mic, one strike. Yo, this ain't a game, this is real life. It's what you make of it. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna make a stake of it. Cause it's rare to see life well done. So you keep on pushing till that blood don't run. The only choice that I'm giving up is to give up. Play is off the table, not an option in my playbook. Run it left, run it right, run it up the gut. Hail Mary, if I got a baby, I'ma throw it up. Go for it, even if it's fourth down and 21. On my 21, and I have to carry life. Good morning and welcome to the Coffee with Chris show. It is Friday, March 4th, and look who's next to me virtually. It's Jack. I'm awake. <laughs> you are. I'm so proud of you. Uh, Jack woke up today because I was just like, do you want to be on the show on Friday? And he's like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing the show with you. Like, so I was just like, yeah, I'll wake up. Yeah. And so, like, you know, as I've been struggling to get myself together as far as what this show looks like, because I don't know anymore, I just get up in the morning and I roll over to the next room and make coffee. And this is where I do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then now all of a sudden people just want me to be all like AMSR stuff. When I'm, I don't know what's happening. I'm just going with the flow right now because I've got so many other things going on in the world so uh so today um we're gonna be uh talking to jack i have 10 very random questions to ask him uh he, he does not know what these questions are so he is unprepared for what's coming his way if you also have random ass questions for jack you can ask them in the comments uh, except for you, Jeremy, because they're probably going to be inappropriate. <laughs> uh, good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, Ezra. I knew the second that you posted that you were going to be on the show, the first person in the comments was going to be Jeremy. That's what partners do when uh, they're awake and have the ability. To <laughs> yeah, because the rest of the rest of your little crew, everyone else is asleep. They're either asleep or they're working. Or they're working. Like, oh yeah, Duke's at work. Okay. Uh, my two, two my other partners are teachers and are like, oh, yeah, we're going to be working, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, good morning, Ezra. I haven't seen Ezra in a minute. How are you? Um, <laughs> Jeremy, who, me? Yes, you. <laughs> yeah, couldn't be. Oh, take a chill pill, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <I love> Jeremy. <laughs> All right. So, um, like I said, I'm going to ask Jack random questions. And we're going to learn a little bit more about who Jack is. I feel like this is my whole goddamn life. Like, <laughs> like who's this guy? From, from volunteering and, and being with like high school, middle school students and answering like weird gay questions, like I, not that weird, just regular gay questions. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, <laughs> to like IML shit and like bare, bare chest calendar shit to this. I'm like, my life is just answering random questions. That is all that you do. And you're mm -hmm. gonna do that again today. So, all right, let's go. Question number one, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Um, well, most, most of this winter has been uh, laying low, like severely laying low um, between like Omicron and and everything else. It was it was uh, just trying to stay healthy and staying home, uh, mostly. And then other than that, like you know, planning for uh, D and D nights. Uh, apparently, I am 
a bunch of my friends have uh, created a group and are um, together trying to get me to get my driver's license. So that is, that is also on the list. Triggering Jack. Triggering. Very. Triggering so for bad. all of us. Because we're like, if Jack does not get his John Brown driver's license... Ooh, that made my blood pressure go up and I'm on blood pressure pills now. So like <laughs> I don't want to, I'll try to get you. I'll try to get you. Um mm. but yeah, I'm also um trying to look into going back to school or at least getting some certifications to help us stuff because you know, money's tight all around. So who are you telling? Right? Ooh. Trying to better myself and make some extra money. Yeah, I feel you on that. Well, all right. Uh, here's the next question. What is the weirdest thing that's happened to you in the last the last year? The weirdest thing that's happened to me in the last year? Yeah. Huh. Like weird. Like weird, weird. Mm-hmm. That is a that is a hard because like COVID stuff. So like how weird is weird, right? Well, you know, uh, something's a little like, wow, that was a little that was a little bizarre. Um, I mean, I, I would say that the weirdest thing to happen to me was um, just sort of all the stuff that happened uh, in Cincinnati when I was in Cincinnati. <laughs> I, I think yeah, that, that kind of that whole trip kind of takes the cake on fucked up and weird. Um, uh, <laughs> there were some issues uh, that we had on a trip going to Cincinnati to go to their uh, leather contest that I was judging. And uh Joffrey ended up in the hospital for the entirety of the trip. And so people were randomly taking care of me. And like uh, one of my partners uh, drove in from Baltimore, <laughs> from, from DC to like to Cincinnati to help me. And everybody there was being crazy. And I was meeting all these wonderful people. Hence why he has a group of people to get him his driver's license. Yep, that that is that is exactly why many of my friends are like, we are not coming to Cincinnati to pick you up and drive your car and our car back <laughs> ever again. So you need to learn how to drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no, I mean that was weird. That was weird. Um, and I always ask this question. I like asking people what's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to them because sometimes you don't think about your life as weird. You oh, know, that's the only way I think about my life. Yeah. <laughs> And you're just like, wow, that wasn't that weird. It, Cause it's just like your life. But like, right. um, you know, I don't know. I always wonder. And a lot of these questions are questions that I genuinely just wanted to know about you. I just like, oh, all right. yeah. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing? Yeah, I got lots of friends. Yeah. Right? Like, uh -huh. <laughs> so Cincinnati. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. And um, like this last year. Yeah. I think that's the weirdest thing that's happened. No, that is definitely fair. That's definitely fair. And good morning, I, David. I did Sugar. also meet a wonderful, a wonderful uh, pup while I was there. Um, and uh, of course you did. He was very, very cute. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. I knew you even weren't... through tragedy and weirdness. I, did you, I, I knew you weren't going to leave there empty handed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I also made sure uh, I also made ducks like the nationals like support for anxiety in my <laughs> life <laughs> like oh. rubber duckies are now like the most calming thing in the world for me rubber and about five other people that live in cincinnati <laughs> rubber duckies um i just want to say good morning david sugar and good morning rick i saw you in there um okay well here's a really random question and i don't know if people are if, i don't know how this is going to go over so Russia versus Ukraine, who do you think is going to win? <laughs> who do I think is going to win? I, well, I'm a pessimist, so I don't know. I've been sitting over here this whole time being like fucking World War Three. And like <sighs> earlier in the week, it was like, well, maybe the steam is getting to get taken out of them because all these sanctions and even China was like, yeah, we're not really going to fuck with you. Well, we're not really going to not like we're not going to do anything. We're like, all right. Maybe this is gonna, you know, calm this shit down. And then all of a sudden, like they're attacking fucking Chernobyl and there, there's gonna be like some nuclear fucking shit that's gonna take out half of Europe. And I'm like, okay, yeah, this what? is just World War III. Yeah, this is just getting so, out of hand. Uh, so, okay, two cents about this whole situation. I'm in two minds about like all the things against like, um, 
you know how like social media and like popular media is like stopping their service to Russia and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm in two oh. minds about that. One, I understand because there's money, you know, trying to take money away from this country, which I get. The other thing is, is that a lot of this has been built out of propaganda, right? Like Putin has put right. a lot of propaganda out there. And I fear, fear that cutting off the rest of the citizens from the rest of the world may help that propaganda get more traction rather than yeah. giving them access to find the truth. So I worry about that. That's like- I thought about that too, because like most countries and most news that we get, we get these snippets of like the worst or best things happening everywhere. Right. And the people, like the people of Russia are generally not for anything that Putin is doing. Like they're under, they're under a thumb and they don't have any options. They can't speak out. They can't do a whole lot of shit. Right. So cutting off a bunch of shit to them is really not helpful to anybody and i understand it i think it's it's our best possible option without you know putting people over there as best we can which we'll probably end up having to do anyway but you know it's not we're not in helping the people of russia we're we're pissing off putin a little bit because this is all he really wants he just wants a war he wants to be able to like Look, I'm a fucking dictator. Look what I get to do. Right. Like, oh. we don't have superheroes to run over there and punch him in the mouth and then drop him on the stairs of the UN. You know, like we. And you know, I'm weirdly like addicted to it because what this whole situation reminds me of when Trump was in office. So, like, I'm addicted to hearing all people talk about like how Putin's like going crazy. Um, and that's like the stuff that I can't wait to like read about is like, ooh, how crazy is he? Um, I mean, he's crazy. He's like. Lex Luthor, fuck, Vic, like Van Doom, like like uh, you know Doctor Doom level crazy. Like yeah. he's he's an actual supervillain without any powers, except he's a dictator, which is a lot of yeah. power. So it's, like, oh, it's and the problem scary, is yeah. everyone else, like like Trump, everyone else is like diplomacy. Let's figure out how to fix this. And he's like, I'm about to bomb people. Like he doesn't give a fuck. Like, no, he does not. He is uh, completely. They said that his mental state is unstable. That is the words that they are using. It is unstable, which is making everyone nervous. Um, Corey says, interesting enough, and good morning, Corey. Uh, he uh, he says my internet at Moscow State was literally a guy throwing an Ethernet cable off the top of a building with a VPN through Sweden. Was that? <laughs> Was that Edward Snowden? Isn't he in Moscow somewhere? <laughs> I need to stop. <laughs> I'm a knock on wood somewhere because I swear we're gonna. <laughs> yeah, that's like, I'm not yeah, making it like, easy. Like I, I am, I am completely like, like this is this is the beginning. Like we've lived through way too much historical moments in like the last ten years. Yeah. Like, it, I, I can't. <laughs> Those Gen Xers really had it made. They were e able to slide straight up under the radar through a lot of shit. Y'all Gen Xers, like, <laughs> y'all came, yeah, like, they came in after Vietnam and like slid through the Cold War and slid through that, you know, the war in Iraq. They got, they got, they got that. They got that. But they kind of slid through. They slid through. Um, and and then here we are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> COVID and the World War Three. <laughs> yikes. Um Mason says, uh Mason said, uh he said to Griffin the other day, I feel like Putin is having a midlife crisis and decided to start a war. Hey, that's kind of what it feels like but like the weird thing is, is that like he has like these reasons behind it he started all this weird propaganda about ukraine and then like and then he like did it and i'm always confused with how many people just like especially the soldiers like the the way um and i guess this is why i could never join the military because i don't know um how to give up that much autonomy about myself um to just go along with orders and there's I'm trust me to be led look at religion for god's sake i have People so much respect for anybody who serves like you know i come from a military family i totally have respect for that my brain doesn't wire that way um 
that's why I have a hard time keeping a job because when my my if a boss tells me like to do something, I have a hard time trying to route myself around whether I think it's a good idea to do it or not. That's just how my brain constantly functions and it has a hard time to like push through that. Um, but uh, I just, but when you know that your boss is bonkers and then you're like looking yeah. at like these people with their like babies and like, you know, they're just like minding their business and going to a market to, you know, get food and what whatnot. I don't know what people in Ukraine do. But like, <laughs> well, the problem people don't see people as people; they see them as the enemy. Right, and that, that's the issue. Like they're not, they're not just a, a person going to the store and having a life. They're, they're the enemy. They're like, the they're, enemy. like, not, like I understand the mentality. I don't, I don't agree with it, but I understand how that happens. Like you get trained. Some people need to have someone tell them what to do, need to give them opinions, and that's what they do. Like they give you your opinions what they want you to have and then they send you out to do whatever the fuck they need you to do <laughs> like oh Corey is dropping all kinds of stuff in here Corey says although although there's a run on medication in russia since the prices are skyrocketing due to inflation and most prescription prices are tied to the euro uh to euro and u.s dollar yep that makes sense also russia has a man mandatory draft for non-college kids under 27 so they really don't want to be in the army. It's not like us where it's volunteer. It was children who are too poor to get out of service. I still think that like there's a power in like a group of people who are just like, this isn't right. And I I always um wonder about that when you're, you know, if you ever had a job and like you know things ain't right. You know what I mean? And you talk with your coworkers and you, and I'm this and I, I don't want to like bring this out of something that's like this is like real that's happening over there, but I'm talking about kind of like an overall situation. But like, you know, you go to work and everyone at work knows something ain't right. You know, and we all, we all talk about it. You're like, this ain't right. I don't know why, blah, blah, blah. But no one mobilizes to say, I don't want to do this. You know like what I mean? Union, like right. Most people don't anymore. <laughs> Cause, right. Because every individual is worried about their paycheck, right? You're worried about your paycheck. You're worried about your paycheck. Um, but like this, uh, sometimes we forget that if all of us are all feeling the same way and we all stand together, we can protect our paychecks and also make change. Um, but I think there's something about like the human nature of it all is just afraid of that risk. And, you know, and that's something that like someone like Putin and like and, and and dictators and people in power who know and understand that human condition take advantage of that. You know, well, it's all bullies. It's just yeah. bullies. Like, you know, when you sit there and you're like, actually, this isn't OK. Like, you can't keep saying this or doing this to me or to this other person. And like an, like another person says, yeah, you're right. You can't do that. Like, that's that'll get rid of a bully faster than just like, you know, running away or dealing with it. Like right. you have to actually do something about it, but like, but like you, at, at its core, but like when you're scared you know, for sitting here putting, you know, and I'm like that, like you put the Ukraine sticker frame on your Facebook and you're like, this sucks. But like, this is actually happening to fucking people. Yeah. This <laughs> like, is like real people. Like if you're afraid of your, for your life or you're afraid for what will happen to your family or afraid for what will happen to your financial future and all that stuff, it is really hard to say, you know, I'm going to stand with this group of people to like fight against this. So you've got a lot of people who were just terrified either which way or the other. And, um, that's, that's not a great, um, I don't understand how somebody can go to sleep at night knowing that you're doing that to people. But also, but a side note, before I go into the next question, I did find this really interesting. I think I posted it. It was the the relationship between more um, being a moral person and having money. And it says that the richer you are, the less... Uh, you know, the less likely you are to make uh, morally sound decisions. So you have a bunch of money. You are more likely to not care about how other people feel or do. You have less empathy 
uh, you know, all of those things. But if and you're you poor, to, people, being less, people are less likely to give a shit about other people in general. Like you, you, the more money you have, you tend to treat people that are doing things for you or around you like so much differently. Like people with money that just going to a restaurant, you see someone with money and you're like, oh, that asshole. Yeah. <laughs> this is just, just I expect a complete you to do this. Asshole. Why shouldn't I expect you to act this way because I have fucking money? If you don't have money, you're like, thank you, please. Like, you're like, like yeah, gratitude is huge when you're poor. And um, being, uh, you see more people who have nothing that volunteer than you do that when you have money, you are less likely to volunteer. So I want y'all to keep an eye on people who were just like, you talk a lot of shit, but then you got money. So you don't actually do any work or help or do anything like that. And, um, you know, the people who really need help, the people who are probably the poorest people that you know are the people who actually bust their ass and do a lot of work for free. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's one of the reasons why they're so broke at the time is because half their half their time is doing shit for other people for free. That is why I have eight dollars in my bank account. Yep. Weird like only like well some of the only like funnier parts of any of this are like the the videos of 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 fucking with the Russian military. Like Joffrey was showing me a video the other day of a farmer who just went up to the <laughs> caravan of tanks and just took a tank, like took a tank. up to the tractor and just drove it the fuck With away. Their fucking tractor. Just <laughs> wanna... running after this dude in the tractor. Like this old lady had a case of liquor and she was just like, I don't have a gun, but I got these. I was like, this bitch is gonna throw Molotov cocktails at the Russian soldier. Like, was like these people are just like come for me like this is like but the ones who are like that are like the real og eastern european people who mm-hmm. are just like come fuck with me now the people who are the people who are these are those transient people right those people who are like okay this yo i just moved here like 10 years ago like this ain't my i'm not in this fight dude. i'm not in og eastern european when they when when they lived in countries that changed their name like every five years remember <laughs> the 90s if y'all remember in the 90s eastern europe map changed constantly those mm-hmm. are the ogs those are the ones who got guns right now those are the ogs like, not with again. The tra- <laughs> right they got them tractors up <laughs> those are the eastern european ogs those are the ones who are not to be fucked with now look if you sit, sit, sit there like yeah i'm from england and i'm going to ukraine because i'm going to study yeah you're on a train right now <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I'm not trying to laugh, but it is the truth. Y'all from the Slavic countries who know shit goes down, they know what's up, and they're just like, try to take my house. I finally got this shit together, and then these assholes are gonna come try to take my shit. Yo, when that I'm serious, when that lady came up with those Molotov cocktails, like come for, I was just like, all right. I'm sorry. We have to give it up for that that woman who that who who went to the sol- the Russian soldiers and was throwing fucking sunflower seeds at them and said, "Put them in your pocket, so like at least when you die, like some something good will grow in its place." And I was that just is, like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> like, that like, is, not even uh, religion, just like here's some sunflower seeds, bitch. Like fucking just take it. I was like, "Oh Jesus." Like that is a that's like yeah shape. hashtag yikes like i'm not i don't want any parts of that oh my god hashtag gosh. sunflower seeds like <laughs> zach just posted that as you were telling that story about the lady with the sunflower seeds it's like awesome. ooh, yeah i ain't fucking with none of them folks over there i am so glad to be in my 40s so as long as the fight don't come here i can just like sit here because i'm i don't need to be drafted don't draft me nowhere don't like i can't i just i just can't be a part of this one Um, they don't want us they don't want us (laughs) they do not want me over there i would that would be horrible um no it's just it's a lot i just i just you know ultimately i think we all just wish this was over i just wish it wasn't happening i feel it's an uneasy time to be in the world right now when something like this is going on Mm -hmm. um okay here's the next question 
what is the worst television show you've ever seen? Oh God. <sighs> worst television show I've ever seen. Well, I'll preface this by saying that me and Joffrey have a three episode rule when it comes to TV shows. Mm -hmm. Like we give everything three episodes. Like I give every book three chapters. I kind of, I give you this amount of time to let me get hooked or at least to like understand where the story's going or feel anything for these characters. So I feel like, like I want to keep seeing what's happening to them. Um, because you can't get that in one episode. Like you, you kind of need a little bit extra meat to be able to figure out if you want to watch it or not. So we started watching, I don't know if it's the worst ever, but this is definitely the worst show in recent memory um, that I can remember watching. Um, it's on Netflix. Uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, it's, it's basically like, it's Sherlock Holmes, but it's not about Sherlock Holmes. Like Sherlock Holmes is like a sucking side character. And it's these fucking like street kids solve it, like solving these mysteries with these people with powers that are like in this time period. And it is some of the worst <laughs> storytelling. And, and we got through the first three episodes and we're like, okay, like let's, uh, all right. Like it's like, one season let's see where this goes and it just kept getting worse and worse but we were like well we already committed like we're already watching it so by like the last bunch of episodes we were like can this be over yet what the hell is happening like why are we still watching this and i'm like we could have just stopped ourselves like we have full power we have a remote control there's other shit to watch but we were like no we committed we're gonna fucking finish it and then when it was over it was like no this is this is the worst. Let's never watch this again. <laughs> oh my god! I will remember what it's called, and I will post it in the notes later. But like, oh my god! Yeah, it was it was one of the worst shows I've watched ever, and it's sad because they were like people with powers, and it was a period piece, and it was I was like all the elements of shit I like are here, but it's just terrible. Oh god! Yeah. Also, trying trying to continuously binge watch Bones is really difficult. <laughs> Bones is not it. No. Oh, see, I, I don't enjoy parts of it, but it's just so dumb, and none of this. All the science is bunk, and at some point, you're. I was just like, I can't keep watching this. Like, oh. we just trailed off. It was bad. See, I don't like those kind of cop shows. I I like the. So I like that kind of like format of a of a show, but I like it only in sci-fi situations. So like, I don't like and like shit like that. Like yeah, type I of like thing. Buffy and Star Trek yeah. and and stuff like that. But I don't like CSI or um, I've not like even back in the day with LA Law. People were like so obsessed with LA Law. I'm like I can't watch these shit. I don't even like New York Undercover, and that's like so in my like genre. But I just can't. I like SVU, but SVU is is it's SVU. It's like an entity unto itself, you know. Like, like I can watch that, you know. Oh, I but don't know. none of them do it for me. And I think Leverage is is really one of the only other ones that I was like super super into that like is even remotely along the lines of like something kind of like that, like in that vein. But it's the criminals instead of the cops, so that's. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Jeremy says, worst storytelling than mom and dad save the universe. First off, Jeremy, Ooh. do not ever talk bad about Jeffrey's, Jeffrey Jones. Any movie that Jeffrey Jones is in, I am all about it, including Howard the Duck. Okay, like oh, all yeah. of those we weird... I love Howard the Duck. He plays the same kind of weirdo dude in every single movie, and... Never ever. I was always watch it. I'll always watch it. <laughs> uh, what about comedy shows like Brooklyn Nine Nine? Like me, um, I yeah, Brooklyn Nine Nine is funny, but I've never, I haven't watched it. Watched it, but um, two people that I sort of like, I didn't directly go to school with, but like we were friends with all the same people are stars on that show. Of and it's course, really hard for me to watch. Of course, Jet. Oh, I grew up in Berkeley. Look at me and my friends. Yeah, it's it's weird watching like 
it's weird sometimes watching your friends do shit and it's even weirder just watching people that you went to like that you knew like if you're there your friends are like i'm gonna watch my friend in the show but if you're like kind of just like acquaintances it's like that's weird like i don't i mm, like that is weird like it's like it, we'll see sydney went to college with duff the king of uh, ace of cakes guy oh shit. <laughs> so because they both went to umbc at the same time and um and so when you know we see duff on tv it is kind of interesting to have that like degree of separation from duff because like sydney like she didn't know him know him but like i believe like he was like her ra or something like that um or something yeah, and it's that, like that, and that, that couple of degrees realm. away yeah and it's like that's it is weird um but i i i don't like that he does the you know the kids baking show because i don't i think it's completely inappropriate to have kids that stressed out um <laughs> So no, I get I mean, that. I mean, who invited the buttons on those kids to make them that stressed out? They're like that was so definitely, stressed out. definitely their parents. Like, I mean, and they will be crying because like something didn't bake right. I'm just like, it's just baking. It's like sweet. if the adults are crying, something didn't bake right. You know, the kids are just like, why? Like this is gonna scar them for like oh, we'll be in therapy God. the rest of their lives talking for about the, this goddamn cooking show. Right, <laughs> over making cookies and shit. Like I don't even understand. I'm like these poor children. <laughs> Uh, and first off, how did they even learn how to use a KitchenAid and all that stuff at their age? Like, my mom never let me use stuff or the oven. They're, and then they were like, I'm going to put this in the blast chiller. Where the fuck did you learn how to use a blast chiller? My and you're 11 years old. I just like, figured out your, your mom was the one to use the oven. <laughs> so old, let me use it. <laughs> Get I go away. home and she's like, "Stop that!" Yeah, like, get away from that! Get away from that! You're gonna you're gonna burn the house down. Uh, <laughs> that's my grand stove. I think that might actually be the issue. But I don't like, think my grandmother did not let me use her stove um, until she was like too old to like care or to stop you. Yeah, because she was just like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, you know, you got to turn the knob a certain. It's a gas stove. It was nothing special about it, uh, but like she thought that this." stove needed to be turned on a very particular way and oh God, this, okay this is gonna bug me hold on keep talking <laughs> uh what's bugging you see there he goes but yeah i was just talking about my grandmother and how she won't let me use the stove and i think it's hilarious that jack's mom won't let him use the stove what do you what do you got i am i am looking up this show because the name of it is bugging me <laughs> oh oh shit okay um while you're doing that then you could tell me what uh, what is your favorite movie of all time? Yeah, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Interesting. Yeah, which is funny because Joffrey hates that movie, um, but it, yeah, it's been my it's my favorite movie of all time. Uh, it was made the same year I was born. Um, I have always loved that movie. Like I always aspired to be Ferris, and always knew that I was Cameron. You know. <laughs> Oh, Cameron. <laughs> yeah. Cameron just wanted to, like, live like, his life. I just life. wanted to stay home. Like, my life kind of sucks. My parents are shitty. I just want to stay home and feel shitty. Yeah. And his friend is just, like, browbeating him to go out and do shit. He's like, I don't want to be here. Like, it's like, just let me, please just let me be. That's fair. <laughs> That's and, and then he has a psychotic break, and then everything's fine. Like, yeah, like, this is the eighties in a nutshell, right there. Just, uh, like, the eighties were such a good time. I don't think we appreciated it enough when we were we were there. At least I didn't. We definitely didn't. No. Um, who is your favorite superhero? Ooh, that's hard. Especially like I, I'm a little biased this morning because we went to go see Batman last night and. Holy shit, that movie was great. Like, it was good? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Like, I, I haven't enjoyed a Batman movie to this degree since The Dark Knight with Heath Ledger. And he made that movie. Like, this, that was, like, him being just perfect in that movie. Well, who's Batman this, now? This whole movie was just brilliant. Who's Batman now? Uh, Robert Pattinson. <laughs> the dude from Twilight? Yeah, that was my feeling, too. But it's fucking great. Like, like the whole like my only complaint about the entire film was his hair. Like his hair bothered me the oh. whole time. 
But other than that, everything about this movie was great. It's like Batman meets Seven. It's fucking awesome. Ooh, that's yeah. It's it's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, that movie still has Seven still has me fucked up. Oh, me too. Yeah, I didn't Ugh. want to watch it, and I watched it at a sleepover, and it was not. Nope, not. not He's all like, "What's in the uh, box, man? Great. What's in the box?" I was like, "No, oh god, that was a lot." Um, but but favorite superhero of all time. That's. That is hard. I mean, if we're going with with the big ones, uh, I have to say Beast. He's my favorite X Man, but he's also just like he's been on multiple super teams. He's you know a big fuzzy buff smart dude who's just like. Like, I'd rather be in the lab than outside kicking ass, but I'll kick some ass if I need to. Like, fucking, yeah, he's he's such a great character, and I love when they actually explore him and don't just, like, make him a side shit. Like, oh, yeah, look at Beast over in the corner doing some shit. Like, when they actually give him some storyline. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think Beast is probably right up there. Like, close second is Nightcrawler, and probably third would be... Black Panther. Okay. Okay. See, I was going to say Black Panther is probably my favorite. I just like, I don't know. I like the idea in general that there's a place that um, is full of black people that are richer than anybody else in the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I know, X-Men will weird. always have my heart first. Like X-Men is like my all time favorite characters comic storylines like all like the, everything about x-men has always been number one for me but then like and in general i'm a marvel person over a dc person mm -hmm. uh but there's like a laundry list of characters that are amazing and half of them that i love the most aren't like the ones that are everyone really knows about so i love when like dc and marvel like hit their back bench really hard of characters and they're just throwing people in there like marvel's been great about that so i'm just like oh my god like <laughs> like you know who that is they're like no i'm like oh, that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> well i have to i'll share a a podcast with everyone from um NPR, um, they have a podcast called um, Money. Uh, God, what is it called? I can't remember. But it's a series, but they did an episode about superhero characters um, and how big of a catalog of superhero characters both uh, DC and Marvel and all of them have that you will even even in um, comic books they've never existed. They just have all of these characters that they just own. And um, I've always found that completely fascinating and how um, they are super, they like are super reluctant to even sell those characters that you will never ever hear of. They won't sell them or anything. They just hold them. Um, it's like yep. superhero NFTs. Like, oh, yeah. no like, shit, it is. The, I mean, when you do so many different characters and you every five to 10 years, you like, completely like you're like etch a sketch your entire universe and do something completely different you need randomly like some new blood to like be like oh we haven't used this hero before how can we make them more modern you throw something new in there that no one's seen right. instead of and you're still gonna throw in everybody else but like like if somebody dies which everyone does eventually in any comic book and they have to bring them back or they're not going to bring them back till next year they'll throw in somebody new in their place like you have to have something to kind of to spice it up with yeah. every once in a while. So, oh, I found the name of that show. It's called The Irregulars, and it's terrible. <laughs> the Irregulars. Oh, I've seen that pop up in my Netflix. Um, thing. Yeah, yeah, I've not watched it. It's fucking awful. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Do not watch that. Do not uh, watch that. I mean, if, it's, if you're into that show, you liked it. No, like, I'm not trying to yuck your yum. Like, everyone has different tastes. But yeah, we were both like, never again. Like, what? Like damn okay fair um here's a random question is racism still uh racism in the leather community still a problem yes 
like <laughs> no 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 pause there yeah it's still a problem <laughs> it's it it, re it also depends on where you are and who you're talking to but like yeah it's still an issue mm. y'all need to get it together <laughs> what is something you're looking forward to what am i looking forward to um i am uh currently looking forward to um uh Shit. Oh, I'm looking forward to the club reopening. Mm, Shoot. Yeah, like, Clifton Pleasure Club reopening is a big deal, and I'm super excited, and I have missed it. I've missed my friends. I've missed just hanging out there. I've missed, the, I missed bartending. Like, So uh, that's going to come back in the next week or so. Uh, mm. I have some trips coming up that I'm really looking forward to. Um, going to Chicago, uh, going to L.A. the end of March. Uh, so I get to see a bunch of people in LA that I haven't seen in a long time. Uh, I'm really looking forward to IML. Just <laughs> yeah. So okay, I have these flight credits, right? Mm -hmm. I've got like five hundred dollars flight credits on Southwest. I don't know where to go, um, but I want to go somewhere. Do you want to go somewhere happened. like on vacation or are you trying to save them for like if I have to go somewhere? Like, well, see, they expire in September. Mm. So I don't know. And like, <laughs> see, I was trying to get Sydney to pull one of her little like um, okie dokes for her job to so that we could go to IML. Um, but she has to, she's going to uh chicago for something else and then she's going to miami at the end of the month so she can't you know do that as well um i'm a terrified of iml you should totally like it seems very daunting and then you get there and it's still pretty daunting but it's like you know um i say i mean i personally think you should still go um <laughs> see the thing is i will be incredibly angry if i get all the way to iml and i get absolutely no action and that's that's what scares me. Is if that, you don't get action in IML, especially you're going to be hanging out with me. Like, I don't see that happening. Uh, there is there is an insane amount of humans. Everyone is looking for something fucking different. Like, it is. There are plenty of parties where you will be fine. Like, I yeah, because I have zero. I was just thinking the other day about like, God, I'm so bad. Like, I don't know if it's bad, but like. I was thinking about how I have, when it comes to cisgender men, I have absolutely no preference preference about who you are, what you look like, as long as you want to do me. That is <laughs> the only requirement. I absolutely have no other specifications. Like, I'm like, there are people who I honestly don't even really know what they look like. I'm like, I oh, have yeah. no idea what you look like. Like I could I no, wouldn't be able to pick you out in a crowd. Because I'm like, I don't remember what you look like. Oh, I'm I'm totally in the same boat with you on that. Like when it comes to hookups specifically, like I'm a like I only like I'm a little picky. Like I gotta be a little attracted to you. But like in general, I'm like, okay, like you're here for a reason. We're gonna do a thing and then you're gonna leave, and I don't even really wanna know your name. Like I, I don't wanna know your real name. I don't want to know what your plans are. I don't. I, I use this line a lot when I was, uh, you know, dating after my divorce. I don't care about your thesis. Like I don't give a shit. <laughs> Not even a little bit, and it is a no. weird feeling because I used to be really into like getting to know someone. No, no, and that's the but thing like, though. But like, see here, the 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 scary part about like somewhere like IML and stuff like that is because one. I rarely um, have any kind of luck around queer cis men um, because queer cis men, like, for some reason are just like completely not into me. They're like, you're not, you're not it. Um, and I think part of it is that I think some cisgender men just still see me as a woman and like, I have that like issue going on. So I'm just like, okay. Um, so like, I am, I'll, I'm just like a little nervous about that. Nah, yeah, I, 
if you don't get some at IML, if you come and you get, you have a hotel room and you're like ready to do whatever you're going to do, I will, I will find something to do that is weird that, and like, I don't know, like slap it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I will put a yeah. sign on my door and just say open for business. And the that's business. Pretty, that's what most people fucking do. Yeah. Open for business. And it's, it's free to ride. It's. Yeah. It's a free ride. Come on. Especially if you, if you stay at the Congress or the Hilton, which is half a block away. Like, yeah, just put a fucking sign up and be like, hey. <laughs> Doors open. Whatever. Let's go. Um, so, okay. <laughs> Stop being weird on this damn show. Uh, out of all of your friends, who is your favorite? Oh, out of my favorite? Yeah, there's a right answer here. I know. You. <laughs> That's correct. Ding, ding, no, ding, ding. Like, that wasn't even like I was just like favorite. Like, that's, like who's your best friend? You are, Chris. Me. <sighs> See, all of y'all in the comments thinking that Jack likes you. I'm just kidding. I just. <laughs> no, Walter was my best friend. <laughs> oh, Walter. <laughs> Grumpy ass Walter. Um. Grumpy right. ass hobo. Oh, okay. He's so, he's so grumpy. Uh, all right, so this is a little bit deeper question, though. Um, what is the biggest lesson you learned from being IML? That my time is not owed to anyone. Mm. Um, I, like we've discussed many times, and something like like I spent the majority of my life trying and feeling like I needed to be of service. I needed to, to be doing everything for everyone or no one would love me or remember me or pay attention to me that I needed to make myself um, important to whatever the thing was that I, I wanted to be a part of so that I, I felt needed because I didn't have any self-esteem. And I was like, if people don't like me or people don't include me, what what am I worth to people? So I spent my whole life volunteering and, and doing everything for free and spending all of my time doing stuff. And as I've gotten to like the kind of the pinnacle of, cause really like any of the, these titles is just like a fuck ton of volunteer work is really what it is. Um, I got to that pinnacle and I got to the place where people are like fighting over my time and I'm like dying and exhausted and sick the whole time because I'm consistently moving. Cause I'm like, I said this week and I do this and I have these three interviews this week and then I'm doing that. And I'm falling apart instead of being like, I don't feel good. This isn't good for me. I need to take a minute. Like maybe I have to cancel a couple of things. Instead of doing the reasonable thing, I just kept doing that because it's so ingrained in me to consistently give of myself. And once we had to like i had to like stop cold because of covid i realized how like and and especially after i actually gave my step aside speech to them in may of 2020 and they like posted it and i was official i was officially done but not functionally done right you know i was very clearly reminded by um my uh one of my predecessors uh ralph Bruno, that like you don't owe anyone anything like if like you're the person who like does that because you want to and you love your community or you love whatever project then do that thing but like if someone calls and asks you to do something you are not obligated to do that thing just because of whatever the fuck reason you're going to give yourself yeah. like you don't have to you can relax you can be like i don't want to where are you busy no i just it's not something i really want to do i'm not in a place to do it right now that's okay and I mean, you were I a very active, now, you were a very active title holder and you didn't yeah. have to be. Yeah. Like technically the only thing I had to do is come back and judge. That's the only thing I had to do uh, in my contract. And I'm, I'm happy with everything I did. I'm so proud of, of the, the stuff I was able to do during my title year. And I still enjoy doing stuff for the community. I love my community. Like I want to do all the things, but also like I'm tired a lot. <laughs> like, and yeah. You know, while I don't have a normal nine to five, I do have a very demanding job. <laughs> um, and it takes up a lot of my mental and emotional and physical time and space. And sometimes I don't, and I, I'm on a fixed income. I don't have the money 
if people aren't willing to to help me get to whatever the thing is or put me up or do whatever like i can't do all of that um so and, and that's okay like i i've stopped not stopped but i've more or less like wound myself back to not feeling as guilty when i have to say no to people yeah yeah good for you jack good for you <laughs> um first off if dante is like literally throwing every kind of subtle hinted comment into the comments uh for you jack um because um and if i didn't acknowledge his presence <laughs> in the comments it wasn't ever going to stop so dante we see you jack can't actually see the comments because he's on zoom with me um and he'll go back and read them and um if he is interested he gets to choose if he wants to contact you or not he knows how to get a hold of you so there you go um duke asks this question oh duke uh did you feel because of the historical nature of your win like there was more pressure on you to say yes to everything yes yeah yeah i mean it, it's the same thing with any 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 first especially with anybody black it's like or any, any people of color it's like you're the first person to you know you're the first one to do this now you have to do it perfectly or everyone it like it becomes a whole thing like i felt like i was holding it up for like it was like well they're never gonna ask you know a, a, you know a trans person or you know a, a black a time loser to come back and do this which isn't the case but like that's what it fucking felt like like i felt like i was holding this space that i had to like at like uphold uh some level of expectation from people based on like the check marks of who i am in their eyes you know and at that and in, in general being IML, there's a lot of expectations. Like your contract is very small, but the expectations of you are very, very high. Um, and I didn't want to give anybody any more reason than they already thought they had to like uh, look down on the title or look down on um, any particular part of who I am or or parts of the community that I, I love and appreciate. and. And me in general, um, I cared less about me specifically because I knew most people that were going to be talking shit are people that I don't even really know. And I really don't give a fuck about their opinions. Right. Um, but still, like, I, I just I didn't want to give anybody any reason for anything, you know. I want to tell this is my uh, my um, I guess what's the what's the word? My my PSA to the leather community stop using jack as a token it jack <laughs> does not give you a pass on being transphobic or not being transphobic or not being racist like saying a you know because one jack holds a lot of a lot of his little cards so he's 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 trans he's black and he's iml so like those things together is one of those things where it's just like um it's like saying i'm trying to think of like someone someone of importance that you would be like you would want to be close with and it's just like but that's like that's an easy grab right to be like well i've invited international mr leather here i mean it's an easy grab because you hold that title right it's like but what other black and trans people are you doing the work for is the bigger question if we invite this one because of the title more than anything else then that fills our quota for whoever the hell else we ever invite like we did invite him one time right like that like, it's like but you would invite the international mr leather but like what are you doing for the rest of the community so that's the question that's my psa to the um to the overall leather community is that yes Jack won. It was a big deal and it was historic and he's awesome and he deserved it. But also you don't get to um, write yourself with history by aligning yourself with the person who's holding the title. Just like uh, Dante says, he, you're the Obama of IML. If, if I hear one more racist white person talk about how they voted for Obama, it does not work like that. 
uh let's talk about the people who live down the street from you like what are you doing for those people what are you for doing? obama so racism is over and Yay! it's like no and that is and i you know what it was that's a great one dante because thank you because like if i hear what we're like well you know i was here for jack uh winning iml and i was like okay yeah so was i um but I mean, yay but like <laughs> also like it shouldn't have been like you that's not a bragging right right like it should have been like a yeah of course i was there for them because they won people are assholes like it's not right. it's not like a bragging right to be like well i was there for them it's just like and like you that that's you should support someone right when they do thing like, it's, it's like, right uh which not to say i have a lot of really awesome people that said a lot of really wonderful and like stood up things and stood up for me when people were talking shit about me you know through my entire year but especially at the beginning and that was a huge deal uh considering like um how the the previous trans title holder for iml uh was treated in a lot of situations like mm. it's a it's a huge deal how the community has moved forward in these politics right. also <laughs> like also there's still some over here <laughs> Right. Also, uh, this is also a problem. Like, oh, gosh. Ah, uh, people. People are a mess. Well, Jack, thank you for waking up this morning. Yeah. To hang out with. Is that all the questions? Shit. We that was that? that was ten. Yeah, that was that's 10 amazing. questions. That really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I knew when to like keep moving on one and all that stuff. I'm good at what I do. Okay. So like, there we go. Um, and Dante, just so you know, that was the another reason why I didn't get up in the comments like that. I'm looking at the time and all of those things. Like, there's a lot happening here. <sighs> Y'all need to cut me some slack. But anyways, Amy and showed up. Hey, Amy. Hey, Kai. Uh, dude, ja uh, Zach. Uh, when I keep going, Zach and Jack, y'all make me feel like I'm reading a Dr. Seuss Book. We go um, out drinking together way too often, and we're just like, "What are your names, Zach and Jack?" Oh, and I'm like, "This is gonna get difficult." <laughs> this is the absolute worst. Abby, good morning. I'm trying to get through. Okay, everybody. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, Chris is good at Chris is not good at everything. Uh, Chris has just been doing. I this think you're good at everything. Ah, uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see about that. Uh, like, I'm going to fuck something up on purpose now. I like, am. <laughs> Gosh. So uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Jack, for getting up. Um, I guess Monday is Motivation Monday. And I'm I'm Jack. Jack went around all over the place um, and did a lot of traveling uh, while he was IML and brought me a mug back from every place that he went and he gave me his last uh mug this past week um and it's a perfect uh cuban coffee mug it's a little small espresso shop mug so um obviously i've got to make a cuban coffee for y'all on monday um so motivation monday i have a book that i wanted to read to y'all too um this is one of sydney's book and it's called uh we will not cancel us so uh it says in other dreams of transformative justices justice um which is also because awesome because it's a small book so i'm gonna do some of that um and we actually were just i was just talking with some people about how we want chris, like chris has such a great radio voice and he should be reading books to me and like <laughs> yeah seriously if anyone has books that you want me to read I will just read books. I will read books. I really want to do a series of reading erotica, but oh god, yes. I want like, um, I really just want like, uh, I want like old erotica. I want like that that podcast you had me listen to. My dad wrote a porno. Like, I want that level of erotica that you that exists. That's like kind of bad and old. Well, the writer school. doesn't know about anything about female anatomy. Like, yes, I want it to be a little like, weird because I think it gets weird if it's actually too sexy. Um, and uh, first off, I love that Duke put a movie on for the kids. Oh, Duke, save the world one VHS tape at a time. <laughs> That's why we're all fucked up now. Because the teacher's just like, oh, I'm just going to put on this weird movie for you. 
Uh, it's like, yeah, like most of our teachers were probably hung over and didn't want to deal with our asses anyway. <laughs> we were old enough to realize that. They're like, I'm just going to fucking put in a video. <laughs> it's like, come on, y'all, here. Um, So, yeah, you know, send me, send me stories, send me books or whatever you want to want me to read i will do it i really am going to try to figure out how to get more into am um amsr stuff so let me try to do that on like tiktok and stuff like that so if y'all are I'm interested i'm gonna find some D erotica and send it to you Ooh. and expect you to fucking read it like i'm gonna find that yes if i can actually pronounce half of the shit that's in there because you know all that weird <laughs> that weird uh fantasy stuff i'm like what the fuck is what the fuck is an orc i still don't know half the shit you're talking about when we play dnd <laughs> I try to give you visual aids. I'm like, I know you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah, here. it's like I don't know what this thing is. Uh, and <laughs> I love playing D and D with y'all. It's, it's I so don't understand it still, but I laugh because like one. Okay, I've got to talk about our last the last game we played because I'm still laughing about Amy and I trying to like swindle like money from the guy we were talking to in the tavern. <laughs> And it's so funny because Amy's like, oh, yeah, I like a good con. And I was just like, yes, Amy. I got to figure out how to do a heist for y'all because I feel like y'all trying to do a heist is going to be really hilarious. Oh, my God, please. <laughs> that would be so funny. Because it's like, first off, you know, everyone that we're, you know, playing with, they're only interested in doing anything unless there's money involved. Like, Jack is just trying to get us to go on these quests. And they're like, wait a second, though. Where's the money? Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Amy just jumped in. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Jack is trying to be a good dungeon master. Be like, can y'all please go on this quest? And Amy, especially Amy, Gabe, and they're both like, but where's the money, though? <laughs> where's, where's the, the money, money, though? Like, you're just mercenaries, so I'm just like, all right, let's just... <laughs> <laughs> we, we only work on contract. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and then that's, it's just so funny. Um, so, yeah, let me, get, let me get out of here. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you, Jack. Uh, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Bye, everyone. Bye,